Welcome to episode 48 here on Sports and Songs. Andy, this is season two, episode one, season premiere of our second year here yep. at the podcast. And we're going to kick things off with some information, sports, music, concerts, and a trivia question. Correct. But go ahead. Go ahead first. You've got something to announce. Yeah. Before the trivia question, those of you watching on YouTube just saw a slideshow of some pictures. Those are uh, family members, friends, listeners of the show who currently are or have served. Um, Veterans Day kind of falling out on Wednesday this week. This is our Veterans Day episode also. Um, so we just wanted to say thank you to all those guys there that, that were pictured. Those who weren't pictured that are listening, thank you. But we just want to put a little slideshow up there. Uh, we'd asked last week for pictures to come in. Always feel free to send those in at any time. We got no problem showing those pictures at any time of a uh, anyone who's served you want uh, to send it in. But uh, something new this year, we're going to start off with uh, a trivia question every week. And um, Dan will be taking care of that, so go ahead. Today's trivia question for our uh, season two se- season premiere here tonight. Uh, there we go. It's, uh, it's football related. The Chicago Bears play the Vikings this week, Monday Night Football. This will be the second straight week the Chicago Bears have taken on the NFL's leading rusher. This week, it will be Delvin Cook of the Vikings. But last week, they also took on the NFL's leading rusher. Who was that? We'll have the answer at the end of the show. All right. We'll go on uh, kind of still the same basic format, a few changes like that. Um, We'll start with NASCAR uh, this weekend. Uh, Chase Elliott won and became the champion, but um, there was a quote from a young man, age 15, back February 16th, 2011, a young Chase Elliott, where he said, racing with all their support and the support of my family is going to be incredible. I'm going to work really hard and make them proud, making the most of this opportunity. That was him at 15 years old when he signed with Hendrick Motorsports. 15 years old, he signed a major contract to someone to race. Wow. I I was at 15 trying to remember not to pick my nose in public, okay? And he's signing a contract. Well, then this Sunday, or last Sunday, he won the championship. He is the champion. There he is with the cup. Um, he is uh, – he had to win the race to, to get the championship. He did. Uh, so that's what Chase Elliott did. He won. He is the third – is the third set – of father-son champions mm. um, in NASCAR. Uh, the first set was uh, Lee and Richard Petty. Uh, everybody's heard of Richard Petty, the king. And Lee Petty, his father, was the king before him. Uh, very few follow NASCAR in their history. Those two names are pretty synonymous. The second set um, may surprise some people. Ned and Dale Jarrett. Um, not exactly first names you think of. Everybody's like, well, must have been the Earnhards. Nope. Junior never got the title. So Ned and J- Dale were the second ones, and then Bill Elliott and Chase Elliott this year. Um, one funny odd stat I heard I saw about that uh, was Bill Elliott and Chase Elliott winning. When Bill Elliott won the championship, it was back in 1988. The Lakers won the NBA championship, the Dodgers won the World Series, and Elliott won the NASCAR championship. This year, Lakers won the NBA, Dodgers won the World Series, and Elliott wins in NASCAR. So, coincidence? Interesting. Yes. Yes. So, there's the father-sons there. Um, that takes us to kind of go to a little baseball stuff. Uh, in Minnesota, we have something called the Northwoods League. It's a minor league. Um baseball and they handed out their big stick awards or what we call the silver slug. They call it the big stick awards. Um, if you can move ahead, Dan, to like the fourth picture, you'll see the list of the, there's Chase Elliott and the father son. Oh, I missed this. Yes. Here's yeah. the combos. Yeah. And there's the list of all the, the big stick winners in the, in the North Woods league um, with their North Woods league team and their college they go to. A lot of the players in the Northwoods League are college players who are kind of playing in their off season to stay in shape. Um, 
so their caliber of play, I guess, would be like an A ball, double A. Um, there's the, the guys. Congratulations to all them. Keep an eye on some of those names college wise if you see them later. Uh, one gentleman there from Nebraska, Spencer Stallenbach or Schwallenbach, um, shortstop for Nebraska. So Minnesota here, we might see him in some Big Ten games if we ever get college baseball again. But there they are. There's those guys there. Congratulations to all of them. The KBO, Korean Baseball League. Um, there is their schedule for their series. Um, those times are our times. We're not playing at 3.30 in the morning, Korea time. That's our time if you want to watch it on the ESPN family of networks, as we like to say. Uh, Doosan. It is uh, they beat the KT Twins in the semis to make it. Of course, the Dinos were the number one seed, so they've been sitting here for about a week waiting for everyone. Best of seven series. Um, again, the ESPN family networks, you can watch them. You can watch them on replay if you don't want to get up at 3.30 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning to watch. If you want to watch them later, great. Go right ahead. There is game times for you. A um, few, few American players you see in there, like we've mentioned this year in the NBA, MLB playoffs, some of those names from, that used to play in Korea or Australia in there. Um, some other major, major league baseball news from the New York Mets. Uh, rather than waiting to test free agency, uh, Strowman did sign with the Mets, a one-year $18.9 million qualifying offer. So he'll be back there. And also in the Mets rotation, Noah Syndergaard. Those of you on Twitter, you need to follow Noah Sundergaard. He's just hilarious. As you see his one tweet there he sent out to uh, Steve Cohn, the new owner of the Mets. Dear Mr. Cohn, hi, I'm Noah. Some people call me Thor. I'm a Met working out in Florida, and I just want to win for the Mets fans just like you. I mean, he has fun on Twitter going back with Mr. Met, the mascot. He puts out tweets like this. It's just nice to see an athlete having fun with Twitter, not taking it seriously. So uh, even if you're a casual baseball fan, good follow there for baseball. Did you have something on the Major League Baseball awards there, Dan, for the year-end awards? Well, what I've got is the awards this week. The awards were handed out in Major League Baseball. Let's go to that now. Here we go. There they are. And so I'll start off first with Cy Young. American League is Mr. Shane Bieber on the left. National League on the right, Trevor Bauer. Future Matt, hopefully. So those are the top two pitchers. Now we go to the managers. Manager of the year, both coming from the state of Florida this year. And so both deserving. Kevin Cash from the Rays, Don Mattingly of the Marlins. Donnie Baseball, they used to call him in the 80s. And I think uh, he's just the, just the fifth manager ever to win manager of the year an MVP at one point in his career. Oh, wow. Fifth, only five people have done that. MVP, Jose Abreu on the left for the Sox. And Freddie Freeman, Braves. Freddie Great Freeman, got me through, he got me through fantasy baseball this year, so yay. Yes. Freddie Freeman won. He was a leader or or in the top five in, in many categories in the National League for hitting. I couldn't believe it. Slugging, average, RBIs, run scored. Uh, he's, he's a good follow on Instagram. He had a picture yeah. last year at Halloween. He's taking his kid out trick-or-treating. They come up with this other kid who was dressed oh. as Freddie Freeman. And he goes to the kid, he goes, hey, do you know who I am? No. Yeah. You know? That <laughs> actually happened. And you didn't recognize him. And then the rookie of the year. Uh, on the left, we got the Kyle Lewis Mariners. And on the right, Devin Williams, Brewers reliever. Don't see a picture get rookie of the year very often. No, it's actually 
Uh, it's hard to read at the bottom of this uh, screen here, but it's the first reliever to win the Rookie of the Year since two, 2011. Yeah, nice. So it's it's pretty rare to have that um, happen. Nice. But that's all I've got for the uh, for the awards. All right, we'll get in some college hockey. We'll start with the Gopher men. Uh, the Big Ten Conference announced this week, back on the 5th, that the first half of the schedule for the 2021 season will be slated to start the weekend of November 13th. A full schedule will feature 24 conference games for each team, plus an additional four contests per school against Arizona State University. Most of that Big Ten venues. Um, the 2021 schedule will conclude March 18th through 20th, 2021, with the Big Ten Men's Ice Hockey Tournament. Um, you see there the preseason uh, schedule, or preseason second team and first team awards. A couple of Gophers on there. Uh, Big Ten 2021 preseason honorable mention Ben Myers uh, for the Gophers right there. Just want to mention Ben is. Uh, well, first of all, the first screen there, the preseason second team, Jackson Laclome is from Eden, uh, sophomore from Eden Prairie. And on the honorable mention, Ben Myers, forward, uh, one of the captains, sophomore from Delano, Minnesota, just down the street here, or as those from not around here, let's call it Delano, but uh, sophomore Delano. Remember Delano making a state tournament a couple years ago for our high school hockey, Ben was a big part of that. So congratulations to those guys on the preseason mentions there. Now, we say the Big Ten Conference for hockey. There's three, four, five, seven teams, Notre Dame being one of them, and Arizona State being played now. So we'll see how that all works out. Not every school has a hockey team, so we'll see how it goes. But for the Gopher schedule, here's their first uh, two, four, eight games. Uh, Penn State, uh, Ohio State, then they go to Michigan State University and the U of University of Michigan. Now, those are the games that are inked for sure right now. Like this thing said, they'll have more coming out later. They're, they're games for now first. Go for women's school is out. They'll start with a couple uh, at home against Ohio State and then Minnesota Duluth up in Duluth. And then they got Wisconsin and Ohio State after that. The Gophers did sign this week. Uh, Please to announce Skylar Vetter signed with the Gopher women from Lakeville High School North or Lakeville North High School. She's played international uh, on the under 18 team for the women goalies. So she's got some international experience. She'll be coming here to the Gophers. So good luck to her. Now the women for Gopher hockey or women hockey is not the big 10. It's still the WCHA. And those teams include Bemidji State, the Beavers, the Gophers, uh, Minnesota Duluth, uh, Minnesota State, the Mavericks, and Mankato, Ohio State, St. Cloud State, and Wisconsin. So those are the teams there that go for women will be going against. So good luck to them this year, unless you're playing Bemidji. Uh, the WCHA men's teams. Now, how about how often is Alabama Huntsville in the big in the top ten? Um, this would be one year. Well, Alabama season pre- Huntsville. That's the preseason rankings for just the WCHA. So, um. Alabama Huntsville, as we remember we talked earlier, them and Alaska Anchorage were close to losing their teams until alumni came in to save with the money. So no pressure there. But you wow. see uh, Minnesota State Mankato got all 10 first place votes for 100 points. Bemidji State got most of the second place votes, but it's got one third place there for 89. Bowling Green, and then and Alabama Huntsville, it's like Arizona State coming up. You don't think of those schools right away at first, but there they are. Uh, starting February 13th, the full schedule through the end of February. The first week is in March is when the games are listed. Um, the playoffs are after that. They do have one thing listed in their schedule. The first weekend in March, they have that weekend open for makeup games. So in case some school has to miss something, they have makeup games. And then the WCHA postseason will start March 12th. But they do have the weekend of the March 5th, or, or yeah, March 5th, 6th, and 7th open listed as makeup game weekend. So NCAA basketball preseason, their rankings are out. There's Gonzaga first, Baylor, Villanova, Virginia, Iowa at number five. 
Uh, Wisconsin, seven. Illinois, eight. Uh, then the bottom half, again, you don't see the Gophers, but there's Michigan State at 13. Uh, Ohio State at 23, Michigan at 25. The Big Ten, as we say, is divided in, you know, they got their women's Big Ten coaches poll and media preseason rankings for uh, all Americans. So I'll scroll down to that one. And there you go. Um, no Gophers on there, but if you look at uh, the third name down, Monica Sazano, Watertown Mayor alum from a couple Ooh. years ago. Wow. There's Monica, listed as preseason and media preseason all Big Ten. So local girl does good. So there she is. Good luck to her in Iowa this year. NCAA football, they've got a few games under their belts now. And there's their rankings. Alabama still hold, uh, Alabama moves up to number one with Clemson's loss to Notre Dame over the weekend. Clemson dropped the fourth. Now, a lot of people are kind of giving Clemson out on that because their big quarterback was out with the COVID. Notre Dame won in overtime. And Notre Dame was ranked fourth at the time. So number one loss to number four. Not really an upset, so that's why they didn't drop too far. Um, but you beat number one, so you leap over the Ohio State who stays at three. Um, Gophers are not up there. They don't deserve to be because they play poorly. Yes, they beat Maryland, but – or not Maryland, they beat um, – the Rutgers they played last weekend? I'm going blank. Illinois, I think. Illinois. Anyway, they won handily. Um, Gophers have a game – well – as we're recording tonight, you'll be hearing this after the game. They play uh, Iowa. And um, so that's a big rivalry game, Floyd Rosedale. Yeah, I'd say a 6 p.m. game on a Friday night for the Gophers. Uh, that should be pretty yeah. good. So good luck to them on that. Let's bring Floyd home. Uh, the Big Ten standings right now are in the east and the west. There's the standings for the west and northwestern. It's not a misprint. Northwestern at 3-0. and And in the East, that is not a misprint. Indiana, 3-0. and Yeah, I think if uh, the three teams, Andy, that I have been most surprised with this year is, of course, Northwestern, yep. Indiana, and Maryland are the three shockers uh, in the right. Big Ten this year. It's unbelievable how good they are. Well, that quarterback at Maryland, uh, good it's young kid is – his brother is Ty, out, uh, quarterback down of the Dolphins. Yes. Who, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> That's his brother. It also, surprises. The Gophers at 1-2, and two, Nebraska at 0-2, oh Michigan 1-2. and two. That's kind of a surprise there, too. Penn State 0-3. Oh yep. Not taking away from the team's doing good. But, you know, just all that change. At least Rutgers was 1-2. and two. They were supposed to be 1-2 and two right now. So hats off to Rutgers for doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> um, now, the high school rankings we're going to do for football next. I got these on Wednesday. We're recording this Friday. I know some teams played yesterday, but they only update these on Sundays and Tuesdays for the rankings. So don't blame me. Write your congressman. Not my problem. But a lot of the teams that won should have won. Um, but here we go. 6A football. Top three stay the same. Lakeville South, Ian Prairie, and St. Michael Albertville. 5A, Moorhead, Andover, and Mankato West. 4A got Ricori, Cold Springs, Fridley and Wilmer. 3A, Albany, Cannon Falls, Wasika. 2A, Caledonia, Blue Earth, and North Community, Minneapolis. Uh, Caledonia is a 3 0, Blue Earth 5 0. That's the conferences. There is no state tournament this year, so you're just going to be your conference champion, and that's it. So there will be a two way prep bowl this year. You'll just have your conference title. It'll be like the old college football where you had you off the coaches' rankings for the national title type of thing. YA got Blooming Prairie, Mayor Lutheran.
Lost your audio, Andy, I think. High school volleyball. There's the rankings there in 3A. Maple Grove, Egan, Northfield. 2A is Stewartville, Albany, and Rosso. And 1A, Mabel, Faustin, and Bethlehem. Faustin at two, yeah. Go Faustin. Um, again, Fairwell, 3-0, and but you know what? These rankings are from Max Prep Sports, which does it off strength of schedule, who you've played, stuff like that, not coaches poll. So that's analytics for you. That's the way of the world right now. We're going off their polls this year. And that's how that goes. But that's not what I got. Like I said, there's going to be no prep bowl show this year for us. We may uh, kind of try to do our best to debunk the rankings maybe at the end of the season if we want the best we can. But that's what I got. Before I go into uh, history and birthdays, Dan, did you have anything else on the sports end of it? I was just going to say that uh... – they had uh, number two ranked Watertown or Mayor Lutheran five and zero, oh. six and zero oh after yesterday. Six and zero, oh. and for those who haven't followed, one of their wins was against the former powerhouse Glencoe Silver Lake. That's where they had the the win streak was snapped or, or something, or they snapped a streak of losses. That was Watertown that did that. That was Watertown did that, not Mayor Lutheran. Oh, Watertown, Watertown did that. Okay, that was our team. Yep. I saw that that uh, that took place in um. It's pretty good. Glencoe Silver Lake, always good in football. Yeah, but Mary Lutheran's been uh, handling everybody pretty well this year. They got a good team. Um, a lot of juniors and seniors on it. So uh, they did make state. Mary Lutheran did make the state tournament last year. Um, so this isn't really that big a shock, but this is unfortunately the COVID year. They won't get a chance to redeem themselves. But you go undefeated your football season, that's all a good thing. Um. For music, I got some concerts. Before you get all excited, they're online concerts. A lot of this information I got off the 93X website and other band websites. So you have to go to these different links to get it. You can't just watch these concerts for free. You have to pay for them. These guys got to make money too, you know, another million dollars. But a lot of these now, again, these are going to be the 14th and 15th. I didn't listen for dates. So you might miss them, but you can always go back and watch them again on their sites and pay for it. Or just to let you know that these are happening. So on the 14th, this is going to be out early Saturday. So you guys on YouTube can hurry and catch it. You got those of you on the podcast, I apologize. It's a day late for you. November 14th, Metallica, live and acoustic. Uh, that's a 4 p.m. concert benefiting all within my hands. 100% of the money raised goes directly to helping someone in need. So Metallica is doing a benefit concert there, 4 p.m. Central. You can get ticket info at, uh, there's a link on there. If you, if you go to Metallica's website, I'm sure they'll have plenty of info there. Tickets ranging everywhere from $15 to $95. How that ranges varies on an online concert, I don't know. Maybe you get more backstage stuff the more you pay. But there you go. November 14th also, August Burns Red is doing a concert. $15 to $115 for their tickets. Again, go to these bands' websites for more information on how to purchase tickets. November 14th, 7 p.m., Foo Fighters, live from the Roxy in Los Angeles, 15 bucks. Not bad to want, you know, 15 bucks. You'd pay 15 bucks to buy their video of the concert. Why not watch it live? November 14th, 8 p.m., Fozzy. Chris Jericho's band, Fozzy. Uh, so it'll be live anywhere. Okay, this is on veeps.com. I love Chris Jericho. I like him as a wrestler. I like him in Fozzy. I think he's a great man. He's got his own podcast. He's got the Jericho Cruise he does. $2,500 for a ticket. Anywhere from $10 to $2,500. What am I getting for $2,500 on a ticket for a video concert of no offense, of Fozzy. It's not like it's Kiss or Aerosmith or Rolling Stones or something like that who can cannot get away with that kind of money, but you'd have no problem seeing that dollar value for them. So who knows what you're getting there. November 19th, Striper, anywhere from 10 to $225 for those tickets. Again, veeps.com for them, and also Striper's website would have information. November 28th, L.A. Guns, 
Uh, we covered them a few weeks back. At album of yes. the LA Guns. 31 years of cocked and loaded, anywhere from $9.99 to $114.99. But again, for 10 bucks, why not? Almost, you know. Um, and Medina Entertainment Center is a Joe Lee band with Anderson Daniels and 21st Uncle Chuck with guest Lady Luck. And December 5th, out at Medina, the Church of Cash Christmas Show. Church of Cash is a Johnny Cash tribute band. So it's Johnny Cash tribute band doing Christmas songs. So if that's your thing, knock yourself out. Uh, upcoming events at Target Center, March 25th through 27th, they are still advertising the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 from NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. So they are still advertising it there. Hmm. Just keep that in mind. That's March 25th and 27th. Um, I took that as good news. They still have it up there. So NCAA is still planning on something like that. So I thought that a little bit of nice news in there for you. Normally, this is where we go to the part of the show where we go over uh, sports and songs, birthdays, and moments in history. We're going to do something a little different today. Uh, this is, of course, like we said, our Veterans Day show. You probably know most of these already, but I'm going to go over a list of just athletes and musicians who have served in the military. Uh, a lot of these are going to be like, well, yeah, we all know that, Andy. But you know what? Maybe some people don't even forgot. So we're going to go through some of these. Um, and I'm not going to go over how long they served for the athlete ones because if you were watching anything this weekend or last week, I'm sure they showed it. When we get to the music part, I'm going to get a little more into what they did because there's not a lot of publicity, publicity in that anymore. Um, but we all remember Roger Stallwatt, U.S. Navy, the quarterback for the Cowboys. Jackie Robinson served in the U.S. Army. Yogi Berra did a stint with the U.S. Navy. David Robinson with the U.S. Navy, of course. Your nickname, the Admiral, you were in the Navy, which I always thought was weird. Seven foot tall kid in the Navy, you know. He grew once he got in. That's why he got kind of got around that. Nolan Ryan served in the Army. Ed Williams in the U.S. Marine Corps. Pat Tillman in the U.S. Army, Roberto Clemente, Marine Corps, Joe Lewis, Boxers Army. I saw a lot of boxers on this list when I was going through it, too, so uh, that was kind of interesting. Joe DiMaggio, U.S. Army. And this one is a real one. It wasn't just part of his actor bit. Jesse Ventura was a Navy SEAL. It wasn't just what he said for his wrestling character. Jesse really did serve as a Navy SEAL. Uh, Whitey Ford was in the Army. Ty Cobb was in the U.S. Army. Willie Mays did time in the Army. Uh, Tom Seaver with the Marine Corps. Alejandro Villanueva, U.S. Army, he still plays for the Steelers. If you recall a couple of years ago, the whole uh, kneeling during the National Anthem thing, he had a little issue with that. The rest of the team stayed in the back, in the clubhouse, in the locker room during the National Anthem. He came out with the flag. So... He just told the team, hey, this was me. I got to do this. He goes, I got you guys' back on the field. Don't get me wrong, but not now. And the team, they, they had, and I'm okay with that. Without getting into it, I had no beef with that. The team still respected him. Some sports, some teams, he might have got cut for that. They didn't. But uh, he still would have to play U.S. Army. Arnold Palmer did time with the U.S. Coast Guard, and Lee Trevino was with the Marine Corps. Uh, one name that I did see on there, I don't, do remember Bob Feller also serving. Um, Bob Feller, yes. I remember Bob Feller, my do my celebrity name dropping here. I got Bob Feller's autograph once at a St. Paul Saints game. It was during their first season there. And he was signing autographs out behind the outfield wall. So you're sitting 400 feet away from home plate, right? I'm out there waiting in line, again, name dropping, standing next to Senator Paul Wellstone. And we're in line, and Bob stops to turn, watch the opening pitch, and he goes, yeah, that was about three inches outside. I got his autograph, go back to my, my cousin and my other buddies were sitting there, we're behind ball and plate. I go, how'd the opening pitch go? The guy goes, it was about three inches outside. I said, that's what Bob said. My buddy goes, my eyes are as good as Bob Feller's. I'm going, he's 70 and 400 feet away and saw it, <laughs> you know? But that just, Bob Feller just always... He stopped to watch the ceremonial opening pitch. He just loved baseball so much. It was so cool to see. Anyway, music people, people in the music industry. 
who served. Elvis Presley uh, did do time with the U.S. Army. Um, he achieved the rank of sergeant before being honorably discharged. Jason Everman, Seattle native who played with both Nirvana and Soundgarden before enlisting in the Special Forces where he served as a with distinction in Afghanistan and Iraq. MC Hammer served three years at the U.S. Navy as a petty officer, third class. Uh, uh, let's see, Tools lead singer, Menard James Keenan, Tools lead singer, served in the U.S. Army and studied at the United States Military Academy and turned down an appointment at West Point. Johnny Cash earned the rank of sergeant serving U.S. Air Force intercepting codes in German at the outset of the Cold War. Uh, one thing we mentioned before, Jimi Hendrix uh, was the Airborne Ranger uh, before he was given the honorable discharge. John Coltrane, uh, the groundbreaking jazz sax, was a seaman first class in the U.S. Navy. Chris Christopherson uh, was a captain in the U.S. Army and was even offered a teaching position at West Point. He decided to give that music thing try instead. John Fogarty served as an Army Reserve at the height of the Vietnam War, but as a reservist, he never did see any combat or action. The next couple I find really hard to... I, I thought Jimi Hendrix was hard to believe. Ice-T, immediately after he entered high school, enlisted in the Army, where he did his four years of service there. Jerry Garcia. After stealing his mom's car, the future Grateful Dead guitarist enlisted in the Army, wasn't cut out for the military life, and was given a general discharge. Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit, assigned to the Navy, spending a couple years on service before returning home. George Strait, a country singer, served in the Army from 71 to 75. While in the Army, he began playing with an Army-sponsored band called Rambling Country. Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson, uh, was a lackluster was once a lackluster airman. He was discharged after only nine months due to back problems. So I got your back, Willie. That explains all the marijuana he smokes now. Back problems. I'm sure Willie has a prescription. <laughs> Willie would never do anything under the law. Willie Nelson. That's what I got, sir. What do you got for the album of the week? Well, I've got one uh, one last note for sports. Uh, minor league, minor league baseball. A little couple shakeups here for the listeners out there. Uh, the season, uh, you know, ended for major league baseball, but the minor leagues has got a few, a little bit of a shakeup here, including, including. The Twins own AAA affiliate, the Rochester Red Wings. Uh, the Twins announced they're not going to be using them going forward for their AAA affiliate, which means right now the Minnesota Twins don't have a AAA home. Uh, the Red Wings, they've used for the past 17 seasons, and uh, that's in Rochester, New York. So here is some options that the Twins are toying with. Uh, with some of these spring training, or not not spring training, but minor league affiliates. Um, I think Sioux Falls uh, in the independent league and the St. Paul Saints in the in independent league are looking to move up to become part of minor league baseball farm system. And I think what the Twins are doing is they want to try to get the St. Paul Saints and the nice field there at CHS Field to be their AAA affiliate. And so that's an option they'd be dropping out of the uh, independent league and could be potentially the twins triple a farm team. And the only thing that kind of makes sense, you know, this year with the, with the pandemic, they did use St. Paul as that training facility, that training, yeah. that, that call up facility was, was in St. Paul. So maybe they were prepping for that, knowing that Rochester would be dropped. And so that's a possibility. And I know Sioux Falls from the independent league also wants to move up and, and be part of, Major League Baseball. There's some other. Well, that's where the Northern League went was Sioux Falls for their season. So that's a nice facility out there. Very nice. And 
And then Wichita, I think, is in the mix uh, as well. And so look for those upcoming notes. Uh, right now, the, the, uh, the Twins do not have a AAA affiliate. And the Mets made some news, too, with their AAA affiliate, the Columbia Fireflies. And so you may know more on this, yeah. but I think they, they, they had an issue with that. They switched facilities, uh, switch affiliates there. Yeah, they're going to be a switch around. They're looking for another affiliate, too. And just to clear it up, say St. Paul becomes a AAA team for the Twins, that does not mean all the Saints players are all AAA team now. The Rochester team does move to St. Paul, correct? Yes. You know, so I don't want everybody to get all excited thinking all these Saints players are now the Twins AAA players. No, they're not. Yes, it would be the Rochester. Twins. The current roster would be the current Rochester Red Wings roster right. officially. It's like when a pro team moves to another city, those players go there. And so I would I would guess if they moved up if it, uh, moved up from the independent league to the AAA farm system, those current members on the roster under contract for the Saints are now unemployed, are they not? That's what I believe. I'm pretty sure they'd probably get first crack to get dispersed out through the uh, – the, the league that the Saints are in, the independent league, they'd be all free agents, if you will, um, and go from there. Hopefully, they're, you know, no offense, your independent league, Marley contract, your SOL. Yeah, there's there's lots of uh, shakeup coming. You know, the Twins have two class, uh, most teams do have two class A teams, a high A and then a low A. And the Florida State Gulf Coast League announced that instead of going high A, next year they're going to play in the low A facility. Now the Twins, now the Twins already have a low A. Cedar Rapids Colonels are low A for the Twins, which means they'd have two low A teams and not a high A. So there's going to be a lot of things shaking out there. But the Florida Gulf Coast League for minor league baseball did announce that they are going to go from high A down to low A. So. It's going to cause a ripple effect, I think, everywhere. And, and if you look at the Twins organization system, below the low A, they also have a, a, a Dominican Republic League team. Um, not a, not saying anything against it, but that's where a lot of the players who can't get up to the States to play A or double A stay down there for a while for whatever reason, paperwork-wise, and that they can't get up. So it's not like it's a below A but when they list all their teams, if you look up the Twins on like Wikipedia or their site, that one's listed below the A. Doesn't mean their quality of play is any worse. I'd say they're done because you look at the roster. Again, without sounding like an idiot, not a lot of Joneses and Smiths and Andersons on that team. It's just the local players there who are trying to get their weight up or for whatever reason can't have the paperwork to get up yet. So they're not anyone to sneeze at. They're good players, good game. You hear a lot of a lot of pro players go to those leagues for winter ball to rehab injuries too. So they got that, um, the two low A teams. I think if Rochester moves here, it could be a good thing for us. Um, the people in St. Paul put a lot of money in the CHS field. Uh, the only thing I got against that there is Mike Vec. I like Mike Vec. Um, I mean, we're not close personal friends or anything, but I like what he's done for that area. I hate to see him being taken out of that and someone else coming in. I, if they do do that, I hope Vec gets a job with them somehow because he knows the stadium, he knows the area. Hey, here's who you can advertise with. Here's who your sponsors are. So if they do move there, I hope Vec still has a job with them. They hire him on somehow. Or if he moves to St. Paul Saints to somewhere else like Duluth or Rochester or something like that or St. Cloud. See how that goes. But um but then it concerns me as Beck moves in a job. He's, I don't know how much to say he's still got it, but the people in St. Paul have done a great job there for years. Yeah, I would, I would assume they would keep him on in some, in, uh, in some capacity. Is what yeah. I would assume. But. Yeah, for so fact, he knows the area, he knows the building, he knows the businesses for whatever. You would think he'd be on some capacity, or at least most of his staff, anyway. Correct. I've got the answer to the trivia question, Andy. Yes. The answer, the question was the uh, Chicago Bears this week is going to face back-to-back -back weeks, last week and this week, going up against the NFL's leading rusher. Uh, Monday night, the Vikings will play the Bears, and the Bears will be facing Delvin Cook. Last week, the NFL's leading rusher was Derrick Henry of the Titans. And so, 
tall order to go up back to back for the defense for the Bears to face uh, <laughs> Derek Henry one week and Delvin Cook the next, and on national TV on Monday Night Football. Besides, so, no pressure there. I would like to bring up the first time the Bears and, and the Vikings ever played Monday Night Football was October 26, 1970. So over 50 years ago. Uh, I was 14 days old. The, Vi the Vikings and the Bears uh, are very common. Uh, I think it's probably the team they played the most maybe in, in Monday Night Football. They, they feature them a lot, the Bears and the Vikings combo. So that'll be a good game to watch. Uh, Monday night in Chicago, Soldier Field. Game time temp should be in the mid-30s. Could be chilly. Do you remember the old Viking Bears Monday night game at, as Dick had called it, the Roller Dome? Yes. Your leaders had their inline skates on and everything for it? Dick yes. and the roller skates. And they always had the people to dress up for Halloween. Uh, yep. It always was fun around that, scheduling that game around Halloween time. Yep. And But this will be good. Vikings are on kind of a little rebound here and yep. doing well. That's all I've got. Anything else before the album of the of the of the week? Um, for those of you who follow us on social media, I did do a little preview of what's coming up. I didn't mention the album of the week was from my favorite member, one of my favorite members of the TV show. You can't do that on television. An old Nickelodeon TV show. And that would be who, Dan? Alanis Morissette. There you go. Ja she's jagged little pill. So the album of the week review uh, this week is right here. Alanis Morissette. Um, that is the the album of the week. Jagged Little Pill is the third studio album by Canadian singer Alanis Morissette, released in June of 1995 through Maverick. It was her first album to, to be released worldwide. It marked a stylistic departure from the dance pop sound of her first two albums. Morissette began work on the album after moving from her hometown in Ottawa, Canada to Toronto. She made little progress until she traveled to Los Angeles where she met producer Glenn Ballard. Morissette and Ballard had an instant connection and began co-writing and experimenting with sounds. The experimentation resulted in an alternative rock album that takes influence from post grunge and pop rock and features guitars, keyboards, drum machines, and harmonica. The lyrics touch upon themes of aggression and unsuccessful relationships, while Ballard introduced a pop sensibility to Morissette's angst. Take a Little Pill was a commercial success topping the charts in 13 countries with sales of 33 million copies worldwide. It was one of the best-selling albums of all time, and it made Morissette the first Canadian to achieve double diamond sales. Jagged Little Pill was nominated for nine Grammys, winning five, including Album of the Year, making the 21-year-old Morissette at the time the youngest artist to win the top honor. Rolling Stone Magazine ranked Jagged Little Pill number 69 on their list of 500 greatest albums of all time. So this was, uh, this was released to June 13th, 1995. Label is Maverick, producer Glenn Ballard. Running time of this album is 57 minutes, 23 seconds. Now, I'm gonna go through and list the, uh, the songs, the tracks. Here, along with some of the notes as as well. Um, song one, All I Really Want. Song two is You Ought to Know. Song three, Perfect. Song four, Hand in My Pocket. Song five, Right Through You. Song six, Forgiven. Song seven, You Learn. Eight, Head Over Feet. Song nine is Mary Jane. Song 10, Ironic. Song 11, Not the Doctor. Song 12 is Wake Up. Song 13, and the final song is You Ought to Know. The guitarist on You Ought to Know was Dave Navarro, and the bassist was Flea from Red Hot Chili Pepper. And then at the end of that song, there is a hidden track. If you listen, it's an acapella song called Your House. 
It's a hidden track at the end of song 13. Now, that we know that information, we can go through the singles that were released. This album had six singles released, two in the latter half of the year 1995, and four singles were released throughout the year 1996. And that's why it stayed on the charts for so long. They saw if they uh, released a You Ought to Know first, and then Hand in My Pocket. The most successful song was the song Ironic, released February of 1996. And that was the most successful song from this album. After that, she released You Learn in July, September, Head Over Feet, and December 1st, All I Really Want. Now, the interesting thing is here, I think, Andy, you'll like this. In 1991, MCA Records Canada released Morissette's debut studio album. And then her second album uh, that sold a little bit more than her first. But the two deals, two record deal is all that she had. And the deal was complete. So all she had was a two record deal. That was done. Leaving her without a record contract after two albums. So 1993, she did not have a record label. And in fact, she was still living with her parents in Ottawa. And she got a, uh, her, her, uh, her publisher and, some manage, and a manager said, you need to move to Toronto and start writing with other people. After graduating from high school, she made the boom. And her publisher actually funded part of her development when she, and, and when she met producer songwriter Glenn Ballard he believed in her enough talent to let her use his home studio. So Ballard said, come here and how about you record and use my studio to do this, to do this album because I think you've got enough talent. Jagged Little Pill was her first internationally released album. And by the spring of 1995, she signed a deal with Maverick Records, little known. And according to her first uh, manager, every other label they approached turned her down. Wow. Every label says, no, not interested. Maverick says, you know what, we'll take it. And this thing went on to sell 33 million records worldwide. No one, <laughs> they all turned it down. So it was interesting here with Morissette. It's mainly, uh, you know, she plays harmonica, there's keyboards and guitars, and the drums are all drum machines, sounds in the background. And they did the, the, the vocals all were done with the original at the original recording studio. And then they went back and after they laid down all the songs, they went back and re-recorded the musical instrument parts. But the lyrics that you hear, the vocals that you hear on the album were all done right off the bat. Uh, they were one of the originals and they only took one or two takes to get those originals down. I did not... I did not know that. That's saying a lot for a young artist to get it down that good in two takes. And Glenn Ballard was the one doing the, you know, right. the guitars and keyboards and she was on harmonica. It was just the two of them really recorded that entire album in the studio. And then they went back later and brought in some, a lot of session guys to play different parts uh, on the music, but they kept the original vocals the same. I did not know that. The album to this day is seen as a landmark in alternative rock. Uh, most of the lyrics were written by Morissette and Glenn Ballard. Very interesting. The song Right Through You is a grunge song with angry lyrics about sleazy record bosses who prey on female artists. Perfect is a pristine ballad that talks about having pushy parents. You Ought to Know. Raw anger, female sexuality. And Forgiven draws on her background growing up as a Catholic, very strong Catholic background, and um, kind of the whole sex before marriage uh, thing uh, with, the, with the Catholic bringing up. And she said that uh, she always believed that if she would have sex before she was married, she's going to be damned in hell forever. And so that song is kind of about that. Mary Jane, of course, is trying to have some reassuring to a friend that had going through a tough time dealing with, obviously, marijuana. 
but I, ironic is the, is the pop rock song, um, very popular. So Maverick Records released Little Dragon Pill internationally in 1995. The album was expected to sell only enough to get her uh, enough money to make a follow-up album. That was kind of their plan. Enough right. money to make a follow-up yeah. album. But the Los Angeles rock station, radio station, K-Rock FM, started playing You Ought to Know over and over and over. And it just went uh, wild. It garnered a lot of attention. They got heavy rotation on MTV as well. Due to the success of the album, Morissette toured worldwide for 18 months. Here's some reviews. They said uh, she was wise beyond her years, determined to expose the hypocrisy that she encountered at every turn. Um, the album, with the lyrics in this album, are, are intensely personal in nature with, with the lyrics. It's, it's good stuff, very raw. In the United States alone, it went six time, 16 times platinum in the U.S. And she was the youngest ever to be certified diamond in the U.S. only until Britney Spears came along, broke the record. Now, the last thing to note is this. In November 2013, I don't know if you knew this, Andy, but uh, they, uh, they announced a theater adaptation a stage they did a there was a, a New York basically a Broadway show called Jagged Little Pill uh, with some different orchestration music in the background and uh, the world premiere of that was May of 2018 so there's the theater version the big the big stage uh, the Broadway show called Jagged Little Pill I think I'll wait for the book Wait for the book. Yes. I'll wait for the book. Then I'll watch the movie. That's all I've got for album of the week. A good, uh, good album uh, landmark, essentially. Yeah, something a little different there. Uh, not our, not our stereotypical hair band music that we usually do. We kind of stray away from that sometimes, but try to try to mix it up here on the show. Especially yeah. start off season two. The season premiere for the uh, season two here is a uh, little Alanis Morissette. Yes. But, but I'll get into the hard, heavy stuff here in the next couple of weeks. Right. As it gets colder. If it gets heavier as we get colder. Cinderella, long, cold winter might be coming. There you go. There you go. Um, That's all I've got. Anything else in the yeah. closing thoughts, Andy? No, no. Just like I said, um, I know last year at this time when we started, <clears throat> excuse me, we're getting ready for prep bowl. We're not going to have that this year. So we'll just kind of have to go to how the football rankings go. We'll maybe compare Max Prep Sports, like we've said with analytics, compared to the Star Tribune, and maybe compare some of that coming up. That'll be kind of our football playoffs there. Don't know about college bowl games, how they're going to work out yet. But like we said, you know, college basketball is coming out with their preseason stuff, um, and they're still advertising tickets at Target Center for the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. So hopefully that all comes through. We'll see how college basketball works out. I've seen some football bowl games are kind of still advertising tickets. I don't know how many. Let's see how that all goes. So just kind of stay tuned. I was going to say something on that, but that's changing week by week all the time too. But we got the baseball awards are out. Uh, football's going. I have been hearing hockey and basketball uh, start close. Um, both sports because of the Olympics are going to be in 2021 this year because they're postponed. Both those sports might are scheduling work on schedule breaks to take breaks so their teams can play in the Olympics. So we'll see how that goes. Hmm. Working their schedules around so the pros can still go to the Olympics. But again, that's still in pencil, nothing in ink yet for that. Um, like I said, every time I think I got something down, I see something different change. So I'll wait. Stay tuned. Um, that's what we got. Like I said, uh, Big Ten basketball starting up. I know the Gophers got hit, both men and women, with COVID stuff at practice. So there'll be a little, little shaking up there, a little different practices going on. Yeah, we'll put a link to your show, Andy, too. Andy's doing a uh, weekly wrestling podcast. Yes, so we'll Andy's wrestling report of this show. Yeah, Andy's wrestling report. There'll be a link on the in the descriptions of this show. We'll put one up on our uh, bio page too. Uh, this week, Jason Inc. and I did a little conversation going over the AEW full gear. We reviewed that and have some talks about title changes in the NWA. Awesome. 
Have a good week, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Next week, see ya.